going on, YouTube? It's been a minute. Uh, just haven't been able to record the last week, but position rankings are still coming. Those are still definitely coming. Uh, got other content as well. I know I say that all the time, but it, it will come at some point. Just haven't been able to record recently. And, uh, you know, today, instead of resuming with, like, the positional stuff, I just kind of want to go in and actually do a first-round mock with some trades. Um, so, you know, that's that's the, the a little interesting part. We're going to have a few trades. You know, I, I'm sure that not all of these are going to happen, but just to throw in some randomness into the mix, kind of show off what I think of some guys. There's going to be a lot of unpopular opinions in this video, and I get that. This is not a prediction mock draft. This is a definitely where I would take these guys, who I would take if I were these teams. And look, we all got different, uh, you know, we all got different opinions. So um, I'll respect yours and you respect mine. But starting off with the Jaguars at number one, uh, I'm not trading the, the first overall pick. I can say that pretty easily. Um, for me, I mean, and for a lot of people, this, this pick is Evan Neal or one of these two pass rushers, except I, I, Aiden Hutchinson's not in the discussion for me. If I'm the Jaguars, I'm not taking Aiden Hutchinson number one overall. He is a safe player, but I do not think he has that high of a ceiling, and I just don't think it's worth number one overall. And while Kayvon Thibodeau would be a fantastic player to pair up with Josh Allen, I mean, that's a very, very scary duo for the future. You got to protect Trevor Lawrence. You got to make his situation as great as possible around him. And, you know, for the Jaguars, I think Evan Neal is the right pick here. You just, you got to go with that protection and get a really, really good tackle. Very, very big, very athletic. Just a great pick here at number one. Then at number two, we have the Detroit Lions. And, you know, <clears throat> again, a lot of people feel like this is probably going to be down to KT and, and Aiden Hutchinson. For me, Hutchinson's not in the discussion. In fact, I'd actually say, for me, it's probably down to Thibodeau, Ajabo, or Kyle Hamilton. I don't know why I spent it with his special names. Or Kyle Hamilton. Because Kyle Hamilton is still my number one player in the draft. For me, he's by far and away the best player. He's a for sure safety. He's big. He's fast. He's athletic. He's really, really, really good. And I think he would actually be really worth the pick for the Lions here. Except... I'm kind of wondering, do the Lions potentially trade down here? They have been potentially shopping the pick as well as Houston, right? There's a lot of teams up at the top this year where, you know, it's a very good talent in this draft. So you can kind of trade down with some guys who might be wanting to more trade up. And I think a team, you know, if any team's looking to trade up right now, I feel like it'd probably be someone like the Falcons, probably, maybe the Giants, but I kind of got plans for the Giants. Um, you know, with the Falcons, I don't know if it's worth trading up to number two for. So I am going to have the Lions just stay put here for right now. And, you know, Kayvon Thibodeau would be a great pickup. He would be a fantastic pickup. But at the same time, the Lions already have a really solid pass rush unit, actually. Sure, they don't have themselves a Kayvon Thibodeau, but, you know, uh, Romeo Cora was hurt for this year, and he was really good a couple years ago. Um, Charles Harris had probably the best year of his career with the Lions here. Um, Trey Flowers, you know, he's not the same as he used to be, but he's still a solid player. They've got a solid unit up front. Coverage is really underrated because, it, and it's weird and some people don't know it, but pass coverage is actually more important than pass rush. And I'm not talking about pass coverage dependent on pass rush. For me, I think it's more important to build through the secondary first, you know, and I know a lot of people disagree with that, but honestly, I'd rather have, you know, there's so many quarterbacks nowadays where they can just get the ball out so quickly that sometimes an elite pass rush just doesn't mean all that much. I mean, look at Joe Burrow, just how quickly he was able to get the ball out, even despite having that horrible of an offensive line. I just feel like secondary is a bit more important because if you got everybody covered, your pass rush will get there eventually. So I'm going to go with the best player in the draft, in my opinion, Kyle Hamilton. The dude is, again, like I said, just an elite talent. He's on another level. I think it'd be a great pickup here for the Lions. Then at number three, we have the Texans, who I'm really considering trading down with them. I really am because, sure, getting a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau, David Ajabo would be great. Getting that high upside pass rusher for a team that's really just starting a rebuild, I think would be a great idea. The issue is obviously who trades up to this spot. I don't see many of these teams really just wanting to trade up at this point. Um, the only team, again, I can see is the Falcons. And at this point, you got a solid shot to land David Ajabo. Um, you know, if I'm thinking it from my my viewpoint, like if I'm the Falcons, I really want David Ajabo. And are these guys going to take him? Any of these guys? I think the biggest threats are probably the Texans and the Giants. The Giants have two picks, so that is a little concerning. Is it enough to move up to number three? I don't know, though. So I am going to have the Texans staying put um, as well. 
and I'm going to take the best pass rusher on the board in Kayvon Thibodeau. Just insane upside. Um, the dude just really has it all. He's got an elite um, arsenal, just a great arsenal of pass rush moves, a uh, great first step. You know, his run defense can definitely use some work, but he's one of those guys where I just think the pure upside is worth it because I see, I, I think Ajabo does have a bit more potential. But Thibodeau's more put well put together right now with still a ton of potential. So for me, it's good enough for the third overall pick. Number four, we got the Jets. And, you know, I really wanted to land Kyle Hamilton here. I would have loved that for the Jets, but I took him to number two. So instead, I am going to be looking to the corner uh, and going to be taking my still number one corner in Derek Stingley. I've been mocking him to the Jets for a while now, and it's stayed the same because I think it's a perfect pairing. You know, Stingley is just this hyper athletic corner which people are starting to fall on and i get it right he was uh, amazing his freshman year but the last two years have not been the greatest you know with injuries he hasn't played the best at times but to be completely honest i really think at the end of the day i think he's been coasting honestly i think it comes down to the fact that he played so well in his rookie year that it's not only worth this pick but he just didn't need to do much else so like yeah he got burned when he played Devonte smith and he was hurt you know every now and then but I still think he's worth this pick because to me, he's easily got the most upside. And there are some great corners in this class. It's a very good corner class. But to me, he has the most upside. And for a team that had a really, really, really bad defense, pairing a guy like Derek Stingley with Bryce Hall, I think is just a great pairing. So I like this pick up here for the Jets. Then at number five, we have the Giants, who you have the Panthers next up. So that is a concern as far as, you know, who do you want to take before them? Well, here's my plan for the Giants, right? And I guess I'll reveal the second part of the plan after the Panthers pick. But for this pick, because ahead of you, you have a team that really, really needs offensive line help. I'm going to go ahead here and take the second best offensive lineman in the, in this class to me. And it's, it's kind of tough, right? Because there are some really good options here. Tyler Linderbaum, very, very, very good center. Legitimately is worth the fifth pick. He's just that good. Um, I'm not as high on Charles Cross. Uh, I still love Icky. I think he'd be a great fit in New York. Um, I don't know if Kenyon Green's necessarily worth this pick. Um, Zion Johnson could also definitely be worth the pick here. Either way, we're going offensive line. And, you know, you don't have a very good center there in New York. And... Andrew Thomas is starting to play really good. So you have somebody on the tackle. Maybe it's time to get somebody just dominant on the interior. So while I do love Icky, I just love the idea of Tyler Linderbaum in New York. So I'm going to go with him number five overall. So with him off the board, the, pa the Panthers are now not able to get um, Linderbaum, obviously. So now the question is, do they go offensive line as well? Or do they take a shot at a quarterback here? And... It's an interesting question because, you know, are you going to really be able to get a good quarterback day two? I think there's a good shot. I mean, well, I don't have a second round list here, but they have a decently high pick on day two. And I think, you know, one or two of these quarterbacks, you know, on the in this kind of like top six category is going to fall to that point. Now, do you want a round two quarterback to potentially be your starter this year? Because Sam Darnold, you know, he played well at points last year, but I still don't think he's the future. I think you're also a team that's just really needing to build that offensive line for whoever's the quarterback, whether it be Deshaun Watson or whoever, you really, really need to build up this offensive line. And so for me, I think it's still the pick and I'm going to go Icky here. I think he's a great fit. They have a lot of needs across the offensive line, basically everywhere but tackle. And Akemikwanu may be a guy that might work out better at tackle, but can also certainly be a guard. And at worst, I think maybe you could play him at left tackle and uh, switch Brady Christensen into guard, see how that works. But either way, just building up that offensive line, if you can't get your hands on Linderbaum, I think I Icky is a great pick here for the Panthers. So now the Giants at number seven. You took yourself an offensive lineman, and now that, that offensive line is starting to build up. You got two great members with Andrew Thomas and Tyler Linderbaum. So what do you do with this seventh pick? Well, you could go defense, right? A guy like Ojabo would be a great pickup for the Giants. However, we are going to have our first trade, and it is not a trade down. Rather, the Giants are going to be trading the seventh overall pick, as well as a few other picks, to the Seattle Seahawks. And, you know, this has been one of my, oh, I can't scroll down. Well, that's just, that's just lovely. We're back because the website would not let me scroll down. But anyways, 
Um, I have the Giants trading their seventh overall pick as well as, I um, mean, I haven't really gone through these trades before, but basically the basics of this trade is that they're trading for Russell Wilson. So Russell Wilson, in this case, you know, we'll just throw in a seventh because I don't think that the Giants are going to be getting any picks back in this trade. They're going to trade a first this year, a first next year, as well as I'd probably say a third this year and a second next year. I'm sure there'd be some sort of 2024 capital in there. But either way, they're trading up a decent amount of capital for Russell Wilson. And, you know, for the Giants on that part of the trade, you get your you get your franchise quarterback. I don't think Russell Wilson wants to be in Seattle anymore. He just seems unhappy to me. And even then, I'm having fun with this draft. So the Giants, so the Seahawks trade to get the seventh overall pick. I don't think they really trade for Daniel Jones in the trade because I wouldn't want Daniel Jones if I'm the Seahawks. And, you know, when you're now at number seven, I think you got to go and select a quarterback with that pick. And now the question becomes, who does Seattle take at seven? You've got your pick of the crop here. You know, Malik Willis is my quarterback number one, uh, which I did, which I did my quarterback rankings video with uh, Ian Cummings, if you want to go check that out. <clears throat> but, you know, Mal Malik Willis is my number one. However, I don't know if he necessarily fits the best because I really like the idea of like a Kenny Pickett or a Matt Corral in Seattle. So it is tough. Because I don't know if Malik Willis necessarily fits the system the best, except, you know, when I kind of think of Russell Wilson, I can think of a few similarities with Malik Willis, you know, just the mobility that they both bring. Um, and I think Malik Willis can play decently well with, you know, not the best offensive line, uh, but you give him some great weapons there in Seattle. I think that can be something. My only concern is that Pete Carroll's not been the best play caller recently. And, you know, that offense has struggled in some respects. The ground game is not very good. And I think Malik Willis is somebody that needs some time to develop. So instead of going with Malik Willis, even though he is my quarterback number one, instead I am going to be going with Matt Corral. And it's a weird pick because I was also really thinking about Kenny Pickett, but I don't think he quite has the upside to be able to take a team that's not that great at the end of the day to anything special. Matt Corral, on the other hand, has some legitimately good upside, uh, as well as the fact that I think he's a nice mix between these guys of NFL ready and upside. He brings some nice things to the team. Um, he can be sporadic, but I also like the idea of somebody just chucking it up to DK and Tyler Lockett. Um, so for me, I think he's a good fit there in Seattle, and you know that's their replacement for Russell Wilson. Then number eight, we got the Falcons, and you know, like I said earlier, they would love for David Ajabo to fall to them, and he did. Uh, David Ajabo has just got some insane upside, and honestly, I think he probably has the most upside out of any player in this class. For a team like the Falcons that just, they do not have that many great players on defense. I mean, Foyce Ola Kuhn was great this year. Grady Jarrett was solid. AJ Terrell was fantastic, but outside of that, you just don't have much, and especially in pass rush, you got a great corner like Terrell, and, and I totally get the idea of pairing him up with a guy like um, Ahmad Gardner or Kyrie Elam, right? That'd be a really scary corner duo, <clears throat> and, and both the edge and corner classes are deep in this class. They are, but... Ojabo's upside is just so fantastic to where I, I totally get the idea of picking a corner. I just really, really love the idea of Ojabo on the Falcons. <clears throat> then at number nine, we got the Broncos, and we are going to be having another trade. And you can probably guess, and of course it won't. Let me scroll, so hold on really quick. Probably guess it is with the Green Bay Packers. Again, I think there's a very legitimate shot that Aaron Rodgers does get traded. Um, you know, and, and there's so much to talk about that. We're not going to go too deep into it. Basically, Packers are going to be trading Aaron Rodgers to the Broncos. So in this case, the Broncos are going to be trading their first overall pick, um, as well as we'll th you know we'll throw in um, we'll throw in a second this year, as well as a first and a third next year. So, so kind of similar to Russell Wilson, uh, there'd also probably be Jerry Judy, I'd imagine, um, in the trade as well uh, for Aaron Rodgers. And you know I don't. I think they'd really get you know a pick back for it but yeah so in this case though the broncos do get aaron Rodgers, and in turn the packers get the number nine overall pick and are you thinking about drafting a quarterback at this point i don't know because they've been shopping jordan love and i think that's probably because they realize that he's not very good um, I'd imagine in the trade, they also end up getting Teddy Bridgewater. So with the case like Bridgewater and Love, 
maybe you have something to where you think, you know, you got a mentor, you know, somebody learning from that mentor, even though it's Teddy Bridgewater. Um, but are they wanting to keep love? Are they wanting Bridgewater, you know, really past what it'd probably be a two year contract if they did resign him? Um, you know, so for the Packers here, I don't know if you're necessarily looking quarterback because while Sam Howell, you know, Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, they'd be some great options for you. I don't know if that's necessarily where the Packers are looking. Um, you know, at the same time, there's also a few teams coming up, you know, that you don't, you're not sure. Maybe somebody you want to trade up here. Um, like I can imagine like Washington, the Vikings, maybe wanting a quarterback, one of these quarterbacks. Uh, but at the end of the day for the Packers, I think we are going to go receiver here. And we're going to get my favorite receiver in the draft in Drake london you know whoever is quarterback there in green bay are, is going to need somebody to throw to and i'm sorry i mean i just taught i just was on twitter discussing this with tfg uh, that, fr that franchise guy i just you know don't see how the packers bring back Devonte adams I, I get that they have few you know future cap but he wants 30 million a year and you guys you know after max possible restructures the packers have negative five million and they're still trying to get back Robert Tanya, MVS. You know, they have Jair Alexander in the future. You know, Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith. They got to extend Rashawn Gary at some point. They're trying to keep Rodgers, like I said. After all that, and you still want to try to keep Adams for $30 million a year? It's not happening. So at that point, you maybe have MVS, Lazard, Jawan Winfrey. You got to get somebody in that receiving room. And I know the Packers don't do it, but this is my mock draft. And I'm having the Packers take Drake London, Drake London, who to me is the most dominant receiver in the class. You know, it's, it's kind of up for debate for a lot of these guys. But he is my favorite, though. He's a big-bodied guy. I think he can be similar to that DK, but with a bit more nuance to his game in a way. So I really like Drake London, and I would love for him to get on the Packers. So, yeah. Uh, and then moving on to the Jets at 10. There are different places I'd like to go here. I'd also think of receiver here for the Jets. You know, maybe you want to go pass rusher, take yourself. Um, yeah, I know this is going to piss some people off, but I still would not consider taking Aiden Hutchinson here. Uh, you know, I'd be looking, you know, maybe um, maybe it's not too early for a N'Kobe Dean at this point, I don't think. Uh, maybe you're looking safety with a Jalen Petrie. But... I'm going to trade this pick as well. And this is not for a quarterback. This is going to be a trade up. And I'm going to have the Jets, tr uh, well, in this turn, it's going to be, oh, I'm just trying to think of what would be easiest to get to go through. We're going to have the Jets um, trading with the Steelers. And so in this turn, they swap picks. And then I, the Steelers are also going to give them, we'll say a third and a, f well, they're moving up how many spots? Let's see. They're moving up from the 20th. So... Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll have the Steelers give up a third this year, another pick, and then a fourth next year. Declined. Well, then we're going to do it the other way around. Um, you know, and I'm also not thinking super heavily about, like, capital outside of this just because, like, you know, <laughs> it's it's only a one-round mock draft. Declined again. Okay, then we're just, we're just going to force it through. We're just going to force it through. <laughs> we will give you a first-round pick if you just move up next. Move up please. Thank you. Anyways, with the Steelers here at 10, it was pretty well known, but Mike Tomlin was absolutely gaga eyes over Malik Willis. And so I'm going with Malik Willis here. Now, my other trade, and, I, and like, I'm not going to do it just because it doesn't matter for the purpose of this video. I would also have the Steelers trading for Jimmy Garoppolo. And I think the plan with that is to have at this point, now you have Garoppolo and Willis as your quarterbacks. You allow Garoppolo to play for a year, maybe two, because I think Willis could really use that development time. But give Willis some time to develop, and all of a sudden, the Steelers have themselves another really good quarterback. Malik Willis, obviously a guy that can just sling it. He's got great mobility. Um, you know, he's not the best at like reading a defense and stuff. His accuracy is not like pinpoint, but he is a really good quarterback with probably the most upside in this class so you know again for again when the Steelers were just so you know they were just all over him and I think that they would definitely be one to trade up here ahead of Washington um you know and get that quarterback for me I, I think it makes a lot of sense and Malik Willis to Pittsburgh is what I'm gonna have happen here 
Uh, then at number 11, we got Washington, and we have another trade. This was kind of a premeditated trade on my part, but we're going to have Washington trading with the Houston Texans. And obviously, you can assume who this is for. Uh, they're going to be getting Deshaun Watson. So, you know, we're going to give them a, a two first, probably a second this year, um, probably a third next year. For, um, in return, we'll just, you know, get this. We're not going to get any picks back. But, yeah, I mean, I think... At the end of the day, Deshaun Watson is not going to be playing for the Texans again. That That is clear. That's done. He's not going to be a Texan ever again. You can talk about the legal issues and stuff, and as per normal, I don't want to get into that. However, and this has been known, you know, because a lot of people seem to think that he's not able to play. He's able to play right now. He's just not been playing because he's been holding out the Texans, and they haven't traded him, obviously, because of the legal issues. Otherwise, Deshaun Watson was able to play this year if he really wanted to. So if he goes to Washington, he'll be able to play. Um, and that part aside, now with the Texans here at the 11th pick, I mean, you took Kayvon Thibodeau earlier. So you got a really good player on defense. You know, now that you kind of moved on from Deshaun Watson, are you looking at a quarterback here? I think if Malik Willis is on the board, maybe they do take him. But at the same time, you're really early in a rebuild. And David? Um, David? David? I'm trying to remember quarterback's name for, for some reason. Um, the kid out of Stanford that I can't remember the name of right now for some reason played pretty well last year. <laughs> At the end of last year specifically, you know, he played well enough that I think he deserves, you know, a year um, to show that maybe he could be something in the future for the Texans. And so in the meantime, I don't see why not, you know, like why, why take a quarterback right now? You're not really ready to go compete or anything. So in that case, why not just go get yourself a great cornerback in Ahmad Gardner? Uh, my corner number two, Ahmad Gardner's just simply really, really freaking good. Never let up a touchdown in his time at Cincinnati. Um, you know, he's a bit raw in some aspects, but overall is pretty easily the best press corner in this class. Um, and he's pretty good in zone as well. So he's just a really good corner. I think he fits on the Texans nicely. And now you're adding two really scary players to that defense um, to help, you know, build that defense up first and then get that offense going later on. Uh, I think it's a great start for the Texans rebuild. Then at number 12, we got the Vikings, who I believe are probably going to stick with Kirk Cousins going forward. It sounds like they're really committed to him, probably going to extend him. In that case, that they do go forward with Kirk Cousins, you're probably looking at upgrading the defense here. I mean, Anthony Harris gone for a couple years now, obviously, uh, well, for a year. And even then, he hasn't been good for a couple years. Um, you know, Harrison Smith getting a bit older. Corner, also a big concern for the Vikings as well. Uh, they could also use a nice edge rusher, especially with the threat of Daniel Hunter leaving. Um, you could look at offensive line here, but I don't think their offensive line is actually as bad as they normally are because Christian Derisaw was great when he got to play last year. Garrett Bradbury is still young, and Brian O'Neill has been great. So the offensive line is not that bad. You could definitely target a Zion Johnson here, but I think it's a bit too early. So instead, I am going to have them going defense. And I think at the end of the day, corner is really important. You know, I just talked about how secondary is really, really important. And Patrick Peterson wasn't that great this year. Mackenzie Alexander wasn't that great this year. Cameron Dancer was fine. They need a corner that has that great potential. And for me, that is going to be Kyer Elam. Uh, I would love Sauce here. I mean, that would pretty easily be the pick um, if, you know, Sauce had fallen to the Vikings. But instead, you still get a really, really good corner in Kyer Elam. Now, I've seen some people low on him, but... You got to understand, Florida's defense was not very good, and it was not on any part of Elam. Like I said, Elam's a very talented corner. Florida just ran a really terrible defense and didn't have a ton of pass rush help. Yeah, they had some great defensive linemen, but just not a lot of pass rush help. And so when you've got a guy like Elam who's been really talented in a very poor system, he's going to be a great player at the next level. So, yeah, you'd love to get Sauce here. I think he is the better corner. Kyrie Elam is still going to be a great corner in the NFL. This is a fantastic corner class, like I said. Then at number 13, we got the Browns. And are you maybe also looking for a quarterback here? I don't think so. I think the Baker hate is a little overhyped. Uh, he was playing, you know, with an injury in his shoulder, which I don't care if it's his throwing arm. You're playing, you know, the biggest game in the world at a very fast pace with a hurting shoulder, you're going to struggle, especially when you don't have any receiving targets. Like there were times this year where Donovan Peoples-Jones was his best 
receiver. At the same time, people point to the offensive line a lot, and it is great, but it's a great running offensive line. It's a great run blocking offensive line. Yeah, it, it's a solid pass blocking unit, but it's not nearly as good as the run blocking um for that team. And the defense itself was good, but like I just think people are overreacting a little bit. Kevin Stefanski could have called better plays. Baker, I still think is going to be the quarterback for the Browns going forward. So instead, we're going to be looking receiver to actually give Baker someone to throw to. And in this case, my receiver number two is going to be Jamison Williams. Is it a bit of a risk? Absolutely. Is it a risk worth taking? Absolutely. I mean, Williams was fantastic. He was my receiver number one before, you know, he had the ACL tear. So I get that that, that hurts, right? He's not going to be able to play probably at the start of the season. Um, but he's a guy that I truly think can be an elite receiver in the NFL, like top 10 level. And for me, that's worth taking if you get that chance with Baker. So I'm going to go James, Jamison Williams at 13. Number 14, we got the Ravens. And for Baltimore, I'm kind of heavily thinking I might go Zion Johnson here just because their offensive line does need some guard help pretty badly and Zion Johnson's can play tackle as well I mean he can play he can play the entire line you know and for a team that doesn't have the best line you are looking there corner can also definitely be a pick just because you know Ravens do not have the the best corners for the future like Marlon Humphrey's extended but beyond that like Jimmy Smith's old and uh Marcus Peters probably leaving so you could also go safety Jalen Pichu would be a nice fit here. They also kind of need edge rusher because Calais Campbell's a free agent. Derek Wolf's a free agent. Um, Adafi Away was, was pretty good this year, but other than that, like they need some pass rush help. So it's kind of up in the air between Zion Johnson and I'd imagine for pass rush, I mean, I'm really tempted to go to Marvin Leal here, to be honest. Uh, he is still my interior number one, and I think he can play kind of that defensive end role. So honestly, there are some great pass rushers on the board, but DeMarvin Leal, and, and he is a pass rusher, but I'm going to go DeMarvin Leal here. Uh, again, I'm still very high on him. I think he's going to rise back up. You know, people starting to lower on him, but he he will be back up in this conversation. Uh, he can play defensive tackle, and I think Brandon Williams is also a free agent. He can play defensive end. You know, I think he works best in like a 3-4 uh, defensive lineman role and that's exactly what the Ravens do uh, I think he'll be great against the run he's also a really good pass rusher so DeMarvin Leal is a freak and I think the Ravens would be getting a great player here so I'm gonna go with DeMarvin Leal here then at number 15 and 16 we got back-to-back -back picks here for the Eagles um there's a multitude of different places we could be going here I kind of like the idea of Zion Johnson since Brandon Brooks retired and so that is a bit of a hole except the Eagles actually have one of the better depth offensive lines in the NFL because, you know, even with Brandon Brooks retiring, I think you can switch Jack Driscoll over there who played really well when he did get to play. So honestly, I don't know if it's that big of a deal. Jason Kelsey is a free agent, but he's probably going to return. Lane Johnson's going to be healthy again. Jordan Mailata was fantastic this year. Um, you know, at left guard Landon Dickerson when he's healthy is great. So they still got one of the best offensive lines. I'd probably be looking at receiver here because there are some really good receivers still on the board and Devontae Smith can't do it all. At the same time, they do have a fair amount of pass rushers on contract. Um, corner, still, I mean, still a need. You pairing some up, someone up with uh, Darius Slay would be awesome. Safety still a need. So they do still have a lot of issues. And, you know, they got three picks in the next five picks here. As far as the teams, I mean, you got the Saints and the Chargers. Both teams looking for receivers, probably. And, you know, Chargers may be also looking for an edge rusher. Saints may be also looking for a corner, potentially. Because, you know, Marshall Lattimore was pretty good this year. But outside of that, I don't know if there's anyone really that good for the Saints. So, for the Eagles here, with these two picks, I do think receiver is going to be one of the picks. Just because these both these teams are looking for receivers. So, at this point, I think the best receiver on the board for me is going to be Garrett Wilson. Um, he is similar to Devontae Smith's in a lot of respects, and I would have loved to go with like Drake London if he had fallen here, but he didn't. Uh, but Garrett Wilson and Devontae Smith are similar in some respects. You know, they're both great route runners, but I think Devontae Smith works a lot better as more of that like slant RPO guy, whereas Garrett Wilson can attack much more of the intermediate intermediate field. So I think it just works out nicely there. You kind of have two levels you can really target somebody there. 
and they just need receiver help. So you do pair yourself up with two really good route runners there. Uh, and then with the second pick, I mean, you're, I think Travis Jones is an option here. Um, but I've really liked what I've seen from Milton Williams. You know, I've, I've always been pretty high on him. Fletcher Cox is still around, but you know, he, they, they have a really good defensive tackle unit right now. Um, edge rusher is definitely a place to go. If I would go edge rusher, I'd imagine it'd probably be Kings and Agber Kingsley and Agbury. Uh, and again, I'm just, I'm lower on, on Hutchinson. I know that's going to make some people mad corner. I'd really like the idea of going, um, Martin Emerson here because he is my corner four. Um, I don't know. Actually started, uh, Trent McDuffie's my corner four. Martin Emerson's my five. Um, and so obviously, yes, I'm, I'm lower on Andrew Booth. Always have been. For the Eagles here, Trent McDuffie, I don't know if he fits as well as Martin Emerson in this scheme. So it's down to Martin Emerson or Nagbari for me. And I think the Chargers probably going to take a Nagbari if he's there. So, because he is a pretty solid run defender. So just to kind of steal it for the Chargers, because he, you know he won't be here for the Eagles. At least I know he's not going to be there because the pick might probably would be our, in Nagbari if he's there. Uh, I am going to go in Nagbari for the Eagles here. Get a really solid edge rusher as well as a pretty good run defender. Just get a, a really good edge there to play um, next to Fletcher and Milton Williams. So then the Chargers at 17. This pick is, is pretty easy for me at the end of the day because i do love travis jones right he is a monster but he's gonna be a monster pass rusher he's a really good pass rushing defensive tackle and when you're losing linval joseph and run defense was such a big issue last year you kind of gotta go with somebody who's just gonna be a dominant run stuffer and even though i do have perry on winfrey and travis jones above him Jordan Davis is about as good as you can get of a run stuffer, somebody that's just going to take up space and just clog up the middle. Like, yeah, again, Winfrey and Travis Jones above him as terms of players, but just with what the Chargers need, I'm going to go Jordan Davis here. I think it makes a lot of sense for them. Saints at 18, going to go receiver. They just need so much receiver help. It's not even funny. And with Michael Thomas coming back, You've got somebody, you know, that doesn't, you know, I, and I don't like him that much, right? I call him Slant Boy. He doesn't just run slants. Like, he can run a lot of different routes and stuff and do it good. He's going to have somebody who has a decent arm and probably Jameis Winston to throw to him. So, I would go Alave here, I think, but I think they kind of already got an Alave-like guy with, you know, and obviously they're different players. They're not the same, but... I think Michael Thomas kind of already brings some of what you're looking for a lobby to bring if you draft him. So honestly, I think this pick here might be down to Eric Ezekanma or Traylon Burks here. But again, Ezekanma brings similar things, I think. So I'm going to go with Traylon Burks here. Uh, really, really good slot receiver. And that's kind of, you know, he'd be the... He is a slot receiver, right? He's a big dude, and he can do nice stuff after the catch. Not as much as some of these other guys in the class, but he can do nice things after the catch. But he is a slot receiver, so I think you really give Michael Thomas that ability to be, you know, the X receiver and and just let Traylon do his thing in the slot, and now you got two really good receivers for the Saints. So I think it'll make it much better. It makes sense, and it's a nice pairing. Then at number 19, the Eagles are going to have their pick of corners here. And I'm going to go with Martin Emerson. Uh, I do have Trent McDuffie above him, but I think Emerson does fit their, their scheme a lot better than McDuffie. Uh, and Martin Emerson, I think, is a guy that's kind of getting you know lost in the shuffle of, a very, like I said, a very good corner class. He, he's just really good. I don't know what else to say other than that. He just I don't have many negatives I can pick out about him. Um, you know, he's not the most athletic guy in the world. He's a bit skinny. You know, he's kind of small, but he's just a really good corner. And I think as a number two with Darius Slay across the field, you've all of a sudden got yourself a really scary corner duo with a really solid upside pass rusher and Kingsley and Agbari, still Milton Williams and Fletcher Cox. You've got yourselves a really nice defense there in Philadelphia. Then at 20 with the Jets who traded down from earlier, uh, you know, you took Derek Stingley earlier. Do you go pass rush here? I think there's a solid chance, and I'd probably have to go with Jermaine Johnson at this point. Uh, I'm a big fan of Johnson. You know, I think he'd be great. 
And honestly, it's it's a bit of a fall for him to even be, be here. I, I would have gone with him at 16, but I just kind of like the fit of an Agbari over Johnson on this Eagles. And I, I know some Eagles fans might want Johnson over an Agbari, but I, I think it was a bit of a better fit. Johnson, though, he's got some really, really good talent that could definitely go much earlier than this. There's a legitimate case for him <clears throat> to pretty much be anywhere in the top 15 for the most part. So with such a good pass rusher on the board still, like, yeah, I, I would like the Jets to address receiver. <clears throat> they still do need to upgrade their offensive line. Jermaine Johnson is just really, really good. So I'm going to have to go with Jermaine Johnson here. Just a really, really good, decent upside pass rusher. That would be really good here at number 20. 21 for the, the uh, Patriots. Probably going to bring back JC Jackson. Uh, defense is still going to be really good, even while losing a few pieces. You know, Henry Anderson probably going to be cut. So they might need some depth at the defensive line. But get a receiver for Mac Jones. I mean, he's got really nobody special to throw to. And, uh, ooh, that's kind of torn. Olave or Ezukanma. I, I think I like Ezekanma more as a receiver, but on the Patriots, get yourself an, a really nice route runner for, you know, Mac Jones to be able to target. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it, it's tough, right? Because I really like Ezekanma, but I do like Olave to the, to the Patriots here, though. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it'd be a good pickup. Raiders at 22. Raiders, another interesting team can also definitely use receiver i think as a makes a lot of sense for them um as far as defense goes see the raiders are a weird team because it doesn't feel like they have that many nagging needs is casey hayward gonna stay probably not so you might want to target like a trent mcduffie which makes a lot of sense because they run a lot of cover three um if i'm not mistaken i think they run a lot of zone and that's a that's a great pick at that point if you know if they do for McDuffie. But again, get yourself a receiver. And I really like Ezekanma. Um, I think he makes a lot of sense for the Raiders here. He'd be a really good fit. Um, yeah, you just gotta get a receiver. I mean, Zay Jones is solid, Hunter Renfro, really solid slot, but Eric Ezekanma can just kind of bring that new level to the Raiders offense. So I like him here at 22. Cardinals at 23. I, I could see Edge here because, you know, at this point, it'd probably be Aiden Hutchinson, I'd imagine. I, I don't have anyone else above Hutchinson at this point. Um, and I know people are probably mad to see him not picked yet at 23. Um, do I like him for the Cardinals? Because he's really, really athletic, but I just don't see the upside in him. I think he's a safe player that'll bring you some good stuff. So maybe do you want him for a year with J.J. Watt to kind of replace Chandler Jones? Because he will bring an immediate impact. And that's kind of what I'm wondering here. Because, sure, you could take a corner. Like, you know, uh, I'd imagine it'd probably be Trent McDuffie at this point. Um, just because when I think of a team like the Cardinals, <clears throat> which I think as of right now, they're probably my pick from the NFC to go to the Super Bowl. Do you want a player like Andrew Booth or, you know, Trent McDuffie, which could be really, really good in a couple years? In Booth's case, probably three or four years. Or do you want to go get a pass rusher that's going to be really good year one and bring you nice production and nice pass rush to go try to win a Super Bowl this year? I think I just kind of talked myself into taking Aiden Hutchinson for the Cardinals. It makes a lot of sense, especially if he falls this far, which for me, it's not a fall. I think this is about where he should go, but you know, he's really, he's going to go top five, obviously in real life teams just view him differently than I do. And you know, you, you can think differently or whatever, but I think it makes sense for the Cardinals here. I think it's a good pickup. Cowboys at 24. I, I, like, to be honest, I kind of want to go Trey McBride. Uh, but I also don't want him to go to the Cowboys. So that's kind of tough because I, I do think really high, highly of Trey McBride. He's been my tight end one since like October, I think. Um, also just a good guy. You know, he's from the same uh, town as me, which I don't live there anymore. So if you want to go look that up, whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, Trey McBride is a very solid tight end. Probably going to lose Dalton Schultz, I imagine. I mean, they could bring him back on a cheap deal if he takes that. But I think he can go get himself a solid deal somewhere. Losing Michael Gallup. Maybe you're looking for something of a replacement. 
Uh, offensive line as well. I mean, Kenyon Green, I really like the idea of that. I I do think Zion Johnson is better, but, you know, Kenyon Green, uh, you know, and I've talked about it with a few people, I, it is a really solid fit on the Cowboys. So that's potentially the pick there. Kind of have a need at linebacker just because, like, Leighton Van Der Esch may be probably gone. And N'Kobe Dean is still on the board, which is a little sad. But I just, you know, don't think there's any teams that would have taken him. But he's a really good linebacker that should be going much higher than this. Um, corner, still a need to me. Like, Trevon Diggs is the Jameis Winston of defense. Um, if you get it, you get it. Safety also a need because they signed a bunch of guys to, like, one-year contract deals and... Jaquan Brisker or Jalen Petrie would be like a really great fit on the Cowboys. So yeah, Ken and Green is a nice fit. They could use corner. And Petrie is my safety number two. But I think Jaquan Brisker is just a really good fit on the Cowboys, to be honest. So I just really like the idea of that. Um, very good box safety. I think he'd be great in the Cowboys. So, you know, get yourself a safety that can kind of come down since Mike Parsons rushes so much. So yeah, I like the fit there. Bills at 25. Um, ooh, do we go Zion Johnson? Cause I can guarantee you he's not going past 29. Zion Johnson will not be going past 29. Does he go here? I don't know. Cause they need guard, but I also don't think offensive line is the biggest of their needs. You know what they really could use is a pass rusher with a whole lot of upside. That could be really good for them. At the same time, I'm pretty sure Terrell Edmonds is a free agent. Uh, or Tremaine Edmonds, I mean. Um, maybe you pair Nakobe Dean up on that defense. That'd be really scary. They still need a corner number two. So maybe go get yourself a Kyler Gordon, maybe. Andrew Booth, potentially. It's kind of a tough pick for the Bills here. Like I said, I don't know if offensive line is that big of a need. Devin Singletary kind of came into his own this year. Ooh, Perry on Winfrey and Travis Jones are still on the board, though. That's true. That's right. That's right. Um, For the Bills here, I'm going to give them a really good defensive tackle in Travis Jones. Um, they they haven't had that star power on the defensive line for a long time. And Travis Jones can bring that. And I think relatively quickly he could kind of come into his own in the NFL. I do have him above uh, Winfrey, you know, and it's kind of sad because Winfrey might potentially fall out of the first round and he's definitely worth a first round pick. But I just got Travis Jones above him. He's just really, really good. So uh, for a team that just doesn't have that star power and a guy like Travis Jones that's very explosive despite being a defensive tackle, I think it's a great pick. Uh, Titans at 26, it, I don't have to think about it much at all, to be honest. N'Kobe Dean is the pick for me. He's the best linebacker in this class that is legitimately worth a top 15 pick, and he's here at 26 for a team that's really going to need linebacker. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. N'Kobe Dean, insanely athletic. Not quite as athletic as Devin Lloyd, but he's insanely athletic and just really, really good. So I think that makes a lot of sense for, for uh, Tennessee here. 27, we got the Buccaneers, and there's still three really good quarterbacks on the board. And in this case, you don't get Rodgers, Russell, or Watson. They've got a lot of money to resign all their guys. You could upgrade it like corner safety because maybe they aren't able to bring back like Carlton Davis. But at the same time, go get yourself Carson Strong. You know, Kenny Pickett might be a bit more ready to start now, and maybe Sam Howell has a bit more upside. But with a guy like Carson Strong, he's arguably the best quarterback in this class, and with some decent upside as well. I mean, he has got really good pocket mobility, which is great because he's not that mobile. He's not that mobile, but he has really great pocket mobility, great arm, probably the best behind only Malik Willis, and it's close. Really good accuracy. He reads the defense well. If you're wanting to try to go get a Tom Brady replacement, why not get somebody that's just really similar to him in style of play that has good upside and I think still gives you a good chance to go be competitive next year. So honestly, I like that pick for the Buccaneers there. Uh, so I think that's a good pick for him. Uh, 28, the Packers are up again. And when they traded up to nine, we had them take Drake London. I'm still kind of thinking quarterback because I kind of like the idea of Sam Howell potentially with the Packers. Um... 
on defense, I mean, do you get a good corner to pair up with Jair? Because Kevin King was fine at times, but besides that, they don't have much. They also really need linebacker, and Devin Lloyd is still there because uh, Devondre Campbell's probably not coming back. Rashawn Gary played really well this year, but beyond that, what do they really have at pass rush? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of between Devin Lloyd and probably... Actually, you know, you know, more I think about it, Devin Lloyd makes a lot of sense there. That's a really good pick, actually, getting him at 28. Again, linebackers just fell, but really, really athletic player with some great upside. Just get yourself a really good player for the defense when you're just not going to have anybody at linebacker next year. So I think that's a good pick for him. 29, like I said, if Zion Johnson is here, he is not going past this pick. Zion Johnson is a first rounder, should be picked much higher than this, but probably won't doesn't in this class just because just because of the way the, bo the board falls but zion johnson is a very very good player for a team that had the worst offensive line in football last year and it was it kind of wasn't even close and you know at least teams like the panthers or the jets like have some you know one maybe two good players on their line the dolphins legitimately have nobody and like i said zion johnson can play on every single position on that offensive line Go get yourself a really good, really versatile, really experienced offensive lineman. Makes a lot of sense. That's a great pick for the Dolphins. Chiefs at 30. I would go receiver because I like the idea of like a Jahan Dotson here, but I also think they might target a receiver in free agency. I don't know if you're going to need any offensive linemen. You already got one of the best already. Running back is a potential pick here. I do like the idea of Kenneth Walker because it... I view him in a, a really similar light to like Le'Veon Bell. So if you could get Le'Veon Bell, but like five years previous to what they had him, that'd be really good for the for the uh, Chiefs who now have an offensive line to have a legitimate run game. Um, as far as defense goes, maybe they go after a pass rusher because Trevon Walker makes a lot of sense for the Chiefs. And again, he has an insane amount of upside, really can turn into one of the best pass rushers in the league. Uh, I also really like Cameron Thomas. I think he'd make a lot of sense here. I think they could still use a corner. Maybe getting a guy like Andrew Booth makes some sense. Uh, probably losing Tyron Matthew. So maybe you want to go get yourself a Jalen Petrie. But ooh, it, it, Kenneth Walker or Travon Walker. Two Walkers here. I'm going to go with Travon. Again, just a lot of great upside in Travon Walker. Maybe the second most behind David Ajabo. I'd probably say third most behind Ajabo in, in Thibodeau as far as pass rushers go. Really athletic. I think if, if he went back, he'd probably be like legitimately in the conversation for like the number one pick next year. He's a really good player that just could have proved some more at Georgia. He had a lot of talent around him, but he's going to be really good in the NFL. Frank Clark's not that good. Get somebody next to Chris Jones that can be a really good pass rusher. Trevon Walker is a good pick for the Chiefs. Bengals are going offensive line. They could certainly go corner here. I mean, I think a lot of these guys make sense for them, but I just don't know if any of them are going to go first necessarily. Uh, Trent McDuffie deserves to, but I don't know if he's a great fit. Uh, Roger McCreary just has really short arms. Kyler Gordon would be a soft. It'll probably be Kyler Gordon if I don't view any fit offensive linemen. The problem is, is that there's fit offensive linemen. I don't think Kenyon Green is worth the pick. Charles Cross is a first rounder to me. But I don't know if you need an upside-based guy. Because I get that a lot of people, they really love Charles Cross's uh, pass blocking. Which is obviously what you're going to be aiming for here is to protect Joe Burrow. I get that. But for me, Charles Cross is just still a really raw player. And even then, when you've got a guy like Joe Mixon, I want to try to get somebody who can kind of play on both fronts. So I don't know if Charles, Gro Charles Cross is my guy. I like guys like Sean Ryan, Abraham Lucas, Bernhard Raymond. There's a lot of solid guys here, but I'm going to go with Nicholas Petit Frere. He is my tackle four, I believe. Um, and I might even, I'm trying to remember, I might even have cross above him. But like I said, I just don't want somebody so raw. I want somebody like Frere where I think he is a bit more pro ready than cross. He can run block and pl pass block very well 
and he's shown some reps of extremely high play in the uh, in college uh, but he's also shown a few eh, reps so i mean he's a bottom first rounder for me but he is still a first rounder and i do like him overall though and i think he'd be a great pickup for the Bengals here and then the lines again at 32 uh, they took kyle hamilton at the very start went, went with safety um I don't think you can quarterback here because, like, while I do like these three, I think you can probably target maybe Sam Howell with, like, your second-round pick that you have in, what, just a couple picks. Uh, I don't think that the Jaguars would be going quarterback. Um, and if you think about it from a standpoint where the Jaguars would be picking next, I feel like they'd probably end up going receiver. So maybe you're wanting to steal a receiver from the Jaguars. And if you are, at this point, I think that the best receiver in the draft, you're probably looking at Calvin Austin. Is he a first rounder? I don't know. I'd probably take, I don't have him graded as a first rounder, but he's like a really fringe, he's like fringe first round for me. For a team that really needs a receiver, like, I don't think of Calvin Austin as like a number one. I view him kind of really similar to Devontae Smith, where I wasn't extremely high on him, but I did think that there was a good amount of upside there. I think Calvin Austin's kind of like a lesser Devontae Smith. So I don't know if he's necessarily worth the first round pick. At the same time, Jalen Tolbert is really tempting here. Christian Watson really tempting. Khalil Shakir as well. So while I do think Austin is better than those guys, I think Tolbert, Dotson, Bell, Watson, better picks here. And between those four guys, again, I have Bell probably the rated highest out of them, but I kind of really like the idea of Tolbert or Dotson. It's a tough pick here for some reason. It's, it's a 30-second pick. It's a receiver. But for the Lions, I'm going to go with Jalen Tolbert. Um, you know, I think he'd be, again... I mean, obviously, he'd be a really solid receiver for the Lions. Um, I think he's he's a big threat that would bring them good... Um, can't speak right now. He's a really good threat, big frame that can bring them just open up the field somewhat, you know, allow Jared Goff someone that he can trust a bit more to actually go try to catch it. Um, you have Tyrell Williams back as number two because I think he signed a two-year contract. <clears throat> um, then all of a sudden, you have a, a decent catching duo right there so uh, i think it makes sense for the lions and i think it'd be a pretty good pick but that is going to be um just a one round mock draft with a few trades mixed in there i hope you guys enjoyed like i said i have position rankings still coming gonna do other videos as well plenty of draft stuff so if you want want to stay tuned don't miss any of that make sure to hit the subscribe button uh, also hit the like button and notification bell so you never miss an upload help me push this content out to somebody you know, that hasn't seen it yet. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching if you did, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.